guys, Ken Stress, Stress Tactical. Hey, before we get going on this video, link down below, Big Daddy Unlimited, Costco of the Gun World, 99 cents for the first month to join. You can cancel at any time, $9.99 a month after. Please use the link below, check them out. Even if you want to check it out for that month, support this channel by supporting Big, da Big Daddy Unlimited, who supports me, all right? So hey, Laser Max Defense, P-A-I-L, or Pistol Aiming Laser, all right? So uh, it's about 175 lumens, mounts to your rail via the screw here. You got your uh, windage and elevation adjustments there. And, and I guess I should have said that uh, this is supposed to be the military contract. I've seen it in a few pictures, but not in a lot of pictures. So I'm wondering whether or not it, it actually made you know made it to contract fulfillment i got this one on gunbroker it was like 550 bucks i think they're supposed to be around three and change the uh so you can go three settings forward is white light right? a little white light there uh middle is off so you get nothing and then all the way to the rear is your ir flood and ir laser combo so it's ambidextrous you got a, a push pad right here on both sides and you can either put it on white light for a second lock it on you know by press and release or hold it down for momentary as soon as you let go it goes off the other thing besides you know did these things get fielded or and if so how many again talking about just seeing a few pictures is finding a holster for it most of the holsters you see out there it, it, at least, uh, you know, any, any pictures of the Army or Navy or whoever running M17s, M18s, it's just a standard holster. No holster cut for a red dot, no holster cut for a, a, a laser or light or anything like that. Now, I have uh, a Safari Land holster. I think I got a couple of them for the red dot and the flashlight, but the flashlight is for the uh, Surefire series of lights, right? So, this, you can kind of force it in, you put your thumb in order to slide, you can kind of pull it out, but it really doesn't, it doesn't fit. It's not designed for it and it doesn't fit in the holster. You could get it in there, but you know, for any real range work or, or duty purposes, you wouldn't want to use that. So I was able through a, a group I'm affiliated with on, on Facebook, there's a guy, I, I guess you got to have a, a dot mill email address and Safari Land will sell it to you, or maybe he's, I don't know, black marketing them or whatever, I hope not. Um, and it was like 175 bucks. And uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, I gave him the money. Supposedly everybody in this group was like, yeah, he's the man, he's the man, he's the man. So uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna get it, but you know, like anything else with someone you don't know and on the internet, it's like, all right, I hope I get it. And, I, and I'm sure I will, I'm not trying to beat the guy up. So if you're the guy and you're watching this, um, you know, Never met you, so it's just in the back of my head. Plus, I'm a cop. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> you know? um, so that's the interesting thing about it is the, these aren't, you can't get these everywhere. It doesn't seem like the military is really using them at all. Uh, and if they did, it seems to be very small numbers and trying to find a holster and then the price gouging on this. So I got my M17 surplus, so I figured I'd want to get one of these. Hopefully that holster will come in at some point. So what comes in the box when you get this thing? So it's just a standard cardboard box, not even any markings on it. So you get the pail, it comes in a little bubble wrap thing. You get uh, batteries for it or, or in this little plastic thing. And then you get uh, the manual, right? So it gives you all the uh, instructions and all of that jazz, uh, everything you need to know about it, you know, mounting and uh, Part numbers, I guess, if you had to replace a screw or an O-ring or something like that. Zeroing the laser and on and off stuff, all, all that good jazz. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to roll in some range footage here. And we'll come back and I'll give you my uh, my opinion after that. All right, so I got the uh, M17 surplus with the uh, Laser Max Defense uh, light on it. And uh, first I'll start out with the... Um, the night sights, the gun's empty here. I'm not pointing it at myself either. Uh, kind of hard to see without a little aid of the light for the camera, but you got two orange in the rear, one green in the front. So I'll try no light first and see how that shakes out on a VTEC uh, skeleton silhouette. Go ahead and uh, load and make ready here.
take a look at the uh, the hits here. So it's kind of hard to see the target. You see, there's not a lot of light out here. I got some ambient light. It's probably not picking up on the camera. And so I was just kind of aiming kind of center mass with uh, not being able to see it great. So there's my hits. Um, couldn't really see the silhouette that great, but I just wanted to see how it did without any light. Um, the orange rear and green front, is, it isn't actually that bad. Um, my commemorative, it seemed like it was a little harder to see, although I've never fired uh, the commemorative in the dark with just the uh, iron sights. So now I'll use the pistol, uh, pistol light from Laser Max Defense and see how that shakes out. All right, so uh, the way this works is you can hold it for momentary and let it go, it'll go off, or you can tap it and leave it on. So uh, I'll just try momentary, just holding it on. All right, see how that works out with the recoil. Going hot. So I'll use my thumb. It's, it is ambidextrous, so you got that black pad on either side. So I'll use my thumb and my support hand. So grip probably won't be perfect. Yeah, if you look at, uh, it may be hard to get on the camera, but I got a, my grip feels a little funky uh, having the thumb down here, but I guess it's not as bad as I thought. All right. Here we go. It was kind of difficult holding it in and my grip did get funky as I started to shoot and had my arms extended um, and at some point it locked the light on. So it might be a case of it may, maybe with this light locking it on is the way to go um, and let's take a look at the hits. So it's a little bit better than than before. Uh, this one down here uh, was from before. The one outside the box was, uh, was from before. So the rest of them were Kind of in the same area i could not make out the night sight once i turned on the light so i could see the night sights without the light on remember this is only like 175 lumens so uh, i thought that was kind of interesting all right so i just uh i wasn't shooting but i just brought up um did the harry's technique and uh, the fbi technique uh just you know holding it out there not shooting the gun and with the fbi technique i could pick up the night sights with the harry's technique i couldn't so with that light source that close to uh, the sights, I couldn't pick them up, uh, but a little further away, I could pick up the dots of the night sights. So, and that's both the green front and the orange rear. So again, this is a surplus, but you know, only a couple years old, right? So it can't be that old. So a um, little interesting there. I've never noticed that uh, problem before in any other guns. Um, certainly never noticed it with my commemorative, uh, but again, I haven't shot the commemorative in the dark. I've just kind of played with it a little bit, dry fire at home. Uh, before I put the red dot on it. All right, 75 yards with the pistol aiming module. It's a light, a lot brighter out than the uh, the camera can really pick up. So let's go ahead and see if we can see the uh, the night sights. You can't, uh, barely. You can kind of see the yellow rears. It looks like. So there's two yellow rears, and then there's a green front. All right, and here's the flashlight. So that's 75 yards. So the uh, the first set of barricades is about the 25 yard line. So we're at the 75, so that's 50 yards away. And so if you, you can't even pick up. So in between, you got three barricades here and then a the fourth one there. In between there, you can see it with the naked eye, but on the camera we cannot pick up that there's VTAC targets, the skeletons, down there. You can't pick that up. So you got three barricades, and in between, at the, the target line, which is 75 yards from us, you cannot see the VTAC targets. And then you can see another barricade, and then there's another barricade at about 10 yards or something. Looks like you really can't make it so. And then close up, obviously close up it seems like it's okay. You can see the trees there. That's probably 10, 15 yards. You can make out that barrel. Uh, you can see that sign over there. Um, you can make out that building. So, and that's where that's the 100 yard line is back where that building is. And the car is a little bit closer than that. 
and you can there's a tower there you really can't even make out the tower with the naked eye you can it's just not picking it up on the camera so there's that now in comparison to that I'll shut that off i'll use my um surefire tactician now it's kind of apples to oranges i believe the the pail is 175 here is a 800 lumen tactician so you can see the car you can see that tower you can see the building buildings see the difference with the 800 lumen light and see if this picks up you can kind of pick up the VTAC targets in between the three barricades on the left and one on the right kind of if I spill it off the ground it bounces so again there is the 800 lumen tactician and then the uh, pistol aiming light yeah, it doesn't have as good throw. It's much better in person, I'll be honest, than it is um, on the camera. Just is with this camera anyway, or maybe the settings. But you can see there is some ambient light. I couldn't read a book right now, but so here's a close up. I'm lining up the sights, and I'll turn the light off to see if you can see. You can only see the front sight. The rear night sights are so, you can kind of see it there. The rear night sights are so dim, they're orange, it's very hard to see. All right, another compare and contrast with the uh, pistol aiming light. Uh, sorry, it's hard to work the camera and the light. There we go. So, there's the headlights and stuff. You can kind of see into the car a little bit. Uh, it's kind of dim, but I can see in. Uh, see, actually with my hands blocking the headlights I can see them better than I, I thought I would um, see under it, kind of see around it now compare and contrast that with the Surefire Tactician which is an 800 lumen and you can see how much <laughs> how much brighter that is um, so just to compare and contrast so that's uh, you know high end headlights, high end car and then uh, they're on high beam so uh, just a compare and contrast there. All right, so there's a PVS 14 in my house by the front door. I'm gonna turn on the pail. If I hold on one second here, I don't have a mount for the 14. There you go. It's a laser and illuminator, and the camera cannot pick up the IR laser, just the illuminator. Try to shut it back off here. You can see just moving it around. It's just a, a flood. Right? But uh, you can't pick up the laser on the camera. You can see it with the naked eye, just not uh, not on the camera. And then there it is, off. And then for point of reference, and then for point of reference, I'm going to turn on the IR flood on the the 14. Oops, trying to line everything up here. Sorry. So it's pretty similar to the IR flood. On the 14. I apologize for not having a mount for this uh, phone, but you get the picture. All right, guys, so you've seen the light perform on the range. You've seen just a quick demo here at home under under nods what the IR function does. Honestly, and it's, it's no, you know, I'm not trying to beat up Laser Max, but, you know, I, I really don't know why the Army didn't just go with Surefire. You know, they got IR, I've never messed with any. I'm sure the quality is good. It's Surefire, right? So, but they have flashlights with a, you know, a turn of the head or whatever. You know, you got IR, you got white light, you got laser, you, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, especially the output, you know, the, the Surefire, was it, X300U is a thousand lumens, right? And then you can get the DG switch that comes back and you just grip the gun like normal versus having to tap uh, or hold down, you know, and then shooting it, you know, you can see it's it's an awkward grip and then during recoil the gun moving out of your hand. So You know, I And then for the price, you know, I don't know what the government's paying I think this was going for around three and change. I got it for five and change on gun broker Price somewhat comparable to a surefire, you know x300 or whatever and I'm sure uncle Sam buying them well 
you never know. You hear Uncle Sam buying a hammer for a hundred bucks, but you buy them in bulk, you know, you try to set a price or whatever, I, I, you know, however that acquisition stuff goes, especially if you want your product in the government's hands and be able to say the government has them, you know, it's just kind of like the M17, right? Just came down to the 19X with Glock and, and the 320 series from SIG. And as I understand it, the SIG, or SIG just about gave, gave them away. So, but they can go out and tell people, oh yeah, the, the M17, we have the contract, we have the contract, buy our 320s. So what a great marketing strategy, right? So if, if they're really not making any money from the government on it, they're definitely making money on the civilian side. So, you know, probably just a you know good marketing thing there. So, you know, lumens aren't very bright. Some people will complain that you have uh, in the IR setting, you, you get the IR light and laser at the same time. Some people may want, you know, one or the other. You get both. The output just messing it around here at five yards at home is pretty similar to the IR, the admin IR light on the goggle. So, you know, I'll still take it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and then, you know, you don't have that pressure pad, that DG switch. And, and a lot of lights don't. You know, I know my CCW Surefire doesn't. Um, so I, I don't know why the military went with it. And, and maybe maybe they're not fielding them because it was just really like, you know, there, there's probably better options out there. And how many people are going to put the light on there? How many people have shot somebody with a pistol in the military? I'm sure it's happened. But, you know, you look at special operations guys that, you know, everybody gets a, a long gun and, and a pistol. How many guys stop carrying a pistol in combat because they never did a transition, you know? So... You know, is it necessary to have that light and laser on your pistol, especially for conventional forces? So something to think about there. But, uh, you know, I wanted it for the collection. I got my M17 surplus. I got my M17 commemorative. I figured I'd pick one of these up as well. And uh, I don't think I mentioned it earlier. I'll throw in a picture here. There was a picture I found online of uh, M17 or M18. They had a different weapon light on there. And somebody said in the comments, I think it was on Facebook or something, that it was a, a leftover from another program or whatever. I know back in the day, you know, I got out right before the GWAT and I went back to my old unit a year or two later and they had the old in Insight, uh, I think there were black uh, pistol mounted lights for the M9 Beretta. Uh, this was, I think, tan or something, whatever you saw there in the picture. So um, I don't know if they actually went to this or not because uh, you're really not seeing a lot of them. So that's probably a good clue as as well that uh you know maybe uncle sam wasn't happy with them so just my two cents let me hear in the comments what you think about the p-a-i-l and if you're military and you've seen any of these or you heard something about it put that down in the comments as well and let me know what you think about the pale till then stay safe train hard and i'll see you on the range